Hello everyone, welcome back to another video game analysis. And I couldn't wait to say that for a long time. We're back and we're starting with Luigi. Alright, today we're doing, uh, even though I want to make this a character analysis, we're going to start off with a little history on Luigi. Because really, this may sound weird, but Luigi, through the years, had to earn his way to getting a character. Uh, well, well let's, let's get into more detail about that. We're going to start with first game Luigi was ever made in, which is right here. The original 1983 classic arcade game, Mario Brothers. Um, Mario was a character from the Donkey Kong arcade games, so one of the first games, cre the first game created by Shigeru Miyamoto, who also created Mario, or then known as Jumping Man. Now, for the Mario Brothers, you had to have multiplayer. As you can see, this isn't the original game, of course. Uh, this is just a remake for the Game Boy Advance. But, nonetheless, this is the first game Luigi was ever aired in. The idea was, since it was called the Mario Brothers, you had to have a brother. And remember, it's not the Mario Brothers without Luigi. Now, Luigi here is player two. People, um, the whole point of Luigi at that at this when he was created... The sad truth is, he was meant to be player two. Nothing more, nothing less. There's nothing much to him. I mean, you can say there's nothing much to Mario either, but we knew Mario, we knew who he was, and he was the fleshed out character uh, for a long time. Luigi wasn't. Luigi, and this is a term I like to use a lot before um, today's view of Luigi, Luigi is known as Green Mario. Pretty much. In fact, his color came from a um, color palette limitation on for arcade machines for the for the game limitations they had back then basically that they, they had to make a second player and they didn't have and they didn't have enough they, they didn't have enough room and they didn't have enough color so they said the second player is going to look exactly like Mario and what they did was in order to compensate for the lack of colors Louis, they noticed that a Koopa their skin looks kind of human like and their uh, shells are green, so they use the and the, they had some white parts too. So they used the color palette of a Koopa for Luigi. They he was just something they added for multiplayer. That's it. I mean, is there anything wrong with that? Of course not. But as time went on, people gained more and more interest in Luigi, and they were curious about him. That's what really made people interested. And after all. It makes perfect sense that they're twins. After all, they look—they're meant to look the same. And at the same time, Luigi's younger. Um, and who's the player two usually? The younger brother. And that's Luigi in a nutshell, really. But you know, Luigi. And the thing about Luigi being um, merely player two was just you know just. Multiplayer was in, you know, if you had an arcade game, you wanted multiplayer, it's fun. It's good to bring people together. Nintendo always believed that, and they still do. Luigi, um, I mean, the most he ever got in the early days was, he had his own game version in the Japanese Mario Bros. 2, which was, uh, which was a, uh, Japan-only release. There was also a, we had a Mario Bros. 2 here in the, um, uh, United States. I don't know if there is another in Europe or whatnot, but uh, that was Doki Doki Panic. Um, it was just reskinned because apparently the Japanese Mario Brothers 2 was felt was too hard, and it is. Trust me, I have it on my Wii. But there's a Mario game and a Luigi game. Now, at this point, I would say that Luigi's character was only arguable because in the Luigi game, he plays differently than Mario, despite looking like Mario. Which is a good first step to make differentiating Luigi, or as he is known as now as Green Mario, to Mario. And with that, you have um, more dimension. You're adding things, you know? It's thought, you know? It was very creative. But basically, the idea is in the Luigi game, you had um, Luigi, who has a higher jump, but it's not as controlled, and he has slipperier traction. It's like he's always walking on ice. His with that physical difference, I think that can act, I think that makes a lot of characters Luigi 
silent protagonists have a way of doing that, the showing their uh, character through their actions. And um, Mario is a testament to that. So is Luigi, as his brother. What happen What happens is, with, with the slippery attraction and the higher jumps, I, I would argue that it, Luigi is more timid and is not as experienced as Mario. A good first step to add in character. It's arguable. It's, it's not set in stone. But, you know, gotta start somewhere. In our American uh, Super Mario Brothers 2, because they skinned over characters, Luigi was appeared as taller, and he still had a higher jump. So this was this was a tradition that was carried over the future games. Luigi had a new physical appearance, which was good. This added more character. I mean, it's just look and how he controlled, but we're getting closer. The, um, he has to he had to earn his character. People's growing curiosity and interest in this character, who had an, who has a remarkable fan base, is really cool. Luigi, um, he has he has a character soon, soon, soon. But what I liked about his physical appearance was he is taller and thinner than Mario. Slightly. And if you think about it, that is literally a representation of a shadow. A shadow, well, depending on the light, of course, but a shadow is typically taller and, sh and thinner than you when projected from light. Luigi is Mar in Mario's shadow. That was always the thing. And this was addressed in a lot of games uh, when Nintendo likes to, when Nintendo, you know, ma mainly the, really Mario RPG games where Mario, where Nintendo likes to um, likes to make fun of themselves a little bit with Mario's story arcs and whatnot. And um, a perfect example of Mar uh, Mario RPGs that addressed the issue of New Luigi not getting enough attention, being that he wasn't in Super Mario RPG or Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, all these big Mario games, was this game. Now, um, the Mario and Luigi RPG series is one of them. It's a very popular RPG series, like very popular, because it has such a cool. It, 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 Mario has that. Um, RPGs have that uh, staple of the action command, which is very unique in RPGs. Where um, you'll see it soon, but um, it, it just has such cool gameplay, and the fact that Mario and Luigi are together playing. This is what gamers wanted for a long time, and. Miyamoto wanted this forever. He wanted this to be in Super Mario 64. There was going to be a co-op mode with Mario and Luigi, but it didn't work out that much. Basically, here we... Um, th now, the next game I'm going to show actually was released before this game, but I wanted to do this one first because Luigi's still the side character here, and it, it's the side. he's the sidekick. He's the B button, not the A button like Mario. But um, what's cool is... Luigi has his character because of the, la the next game we're going to show, but it, it, it shows how he can work with Mario, and it shows the two different dimensions of Mario uh, and Luigi, which make them two different people. And uh, Luigi, and it show, and it, I think that it's good that these two twins have different aspects of bravery uh, and uh, heroism, like they have, because they're Super Mario brothers. You know, they both have to have that heroism and. and um, and the uh, bravery just in different ways and the differences between these two characters make them unique and fun in the fact um, even the um, I remember I was watching an interview recently with um, Charles Martinet he's the voice of all the Mario Brothers including their babies uh, themselves and uh, Warrior in the Wall Luigi and their baby selves he does a lot of voices in the Mario universe and he loves doing these characters because they bring such joy and bravery and he really gets it like he um, I mean, of course he does. He's been doing their voice since it's the late 90s, but, well, Mario's voice anyway. Uh, he didn't do Luigi's voice until um, uh, the GameCube era. But anyway, um, he, he he was asked, actually, was really interesting, was, you, do you, can you just instantly go for Mario and Luigi? Is it such, he's so easy for you to uh, distinguish them? And he said yes, because they, and uh, it was really cool. Um, I liked seeing that. I liked knowing that there is a difference between Mario and Luigi. They are brothers, but they have dimensions to them. They're their own people, which is really cool. Luigi here is no longer Green Mario. Um, by the N64 days, he was just in sub uh, side games, and which really made people want this kind of game. They want he wanted to work with his brother. He wanted they wanted his own game, and he got that too. We got a sequel to it too. We'll be sh I'm sure you know what game I'm showing next. We all knew this game was going to be in this episode, people. But let's talk about Mario Luigi here because 
it, it it's just like these two scenes I picked the open in the opening of the game or it just shows so well the difference even the way they stand the way they uh, cower and fear there uh, uh, and the way they run the way they interact it, it it's different but in, it, it, it's good what I, uh, and um, what I liked about this series was the great amount of teamwork and the cool uh, ways to solve puzzles and whatnot it's a great series uh, a new one's coming out for the year of Luigi which by the way was a coincidence uh, I have proof, I have video saying I was going to do this since last year, but uh, I digress. <laughs> here we have um, the, I, I skipped over here because this is where, uh, this shows a big difference in Mario and Luigi that I want to point out. Mario just hops on that, Luigi just wants to wish him goodbye, you know, the usual, what we perceive us gamers up to this point as the usual, because if you play the Paper Mario series, or if you played, uh, any Mario game really, Super Mario 64, Mario Sunshine, um, even though, again, Mario Sunshine came after uh, the next game I'm showing. It's just to make a point, people. Um, it, it's, it's really cool because uh, it, it, I like this. I like seeing Luigi as an individual person. Look at him. He's afraid. He doesn't want to go. And this is, uh, and he's trying to run away. It's, it's funny. Um, and Luigi, it's just so cool, because Luigi here, he uh, he's the little brother. He's and I, I wasn't that. F if if I made the argument that I made before about uh, the Mario Brothers two uh, talk, I wouldn't have been that far off because there's a few points there that would have been pretty valid by Nintendo. Because Nintendo has a a good eye for these things. They take a lot of care and consideration in their characters, and it shows very well here. Here's Mario. Here's Mario on board, ready to go on an adventure without even thinking about it. Here's Luigi, not wanting to go, but in the end of the day, watch this next part because I love how this looks. Um, not, not yet. <laughs> I love this look. Look at Mario and look at Luigi. Luigi's, con they're both contemplating on their adventure, but in two different ways. Luigi is seeing this more. Mario's seeing this as a way of Mario's thinking about what he's gonna do, how he's gonna approach. Uh, saving Princess Peach's voice, and Luigi is um, he's thinking about what's going to happen to him, <laughs> the dangers. It, it, it's 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 the same idea, just two different ways. And this shows that Luigi's getting out of Mario's shadow. It shows that he has a character, which is just fantastic. Go Luigi! Something I failed to mention about the Mario Brothers in my when I did Mario last year. You know, back in my amateur days, <laughs> where yeah, like the new layout. I like the new layout, a lot more professional. Need don't worry about the background, by the way. This is just temporary, so my basement gets fixed. Anywho, um, what what I failed to mention was, um, Mario and Luigi, the Mario Brothers. Despite being such a, a cartoony game, you can find that they're very believable characters. They're very believable people. Like you can really. You can imagine these people can exist. I mean, not as cartoony. They can't. They won't be able to jump that high or uh, take that much damage, or you know what I mean. Like, take all the game logic out of it. Take all the fan fantasized abilities, and you can believe these characters exist. These two brothers, uh, the, these two twins, one older, one younger. The two the, the dynamics they have between each other, the love they have, that uh, the bond they have that the uh, Mario and Luigi series I think shows very well, and. It shows it of a growth for Luigi too that we can have these dynamics. I, I really enjoy that and the big breakthrough moment after all the N sixty four games being stuck in spin offs, Luigi got his own game. And the idea happened before in a Super Nintendo or it was an NES game but it was released for the Super Nintendo called uh Mario is Missing. It was a game involving uh Luigi finding Mario. Problem was that sounds cool. But it was an educational game when they made those. <laughs> um, the idea was you go around the world and you collect clues and whatnot. And it was, it was mundane and boring, and you couldn't really figure out what to do at first. Um, but, and peep gamers liked that idea, but they got sorely disappointed. Mario, well, not all Mario games were the greatest masterpieces ever. There's no such thing as a perfect franchise, people. Um, I mean, I mean me personally, I like Mario more. I'm more of a Mario fan, but. I do love, don't get me wrong, I mean, Luigi's great. I love Luigi. That's why I'm making a whole episode about him, starting the season off with him, aren't I? 
But um, Lu Luigi's different than Mario. You know, you can make that choice. You can say which Mario brother you like more than the other. Isn't that great? Doesn't that show that Luigi has his own character? I like that. But um, here's the beginning of Luigi's solo game, Luigi's Mansion, which which just got a great new sequel. Pick it up if you have a 3DS. But um, enough of my jibber jabber. Let's get to the cool video. Luigi's Mansion. Here it is, people. Luigi's no longer Green Mario. He is Luigi. His first solo game ever, they reintroduced the idea of Mario's missing and actually put care and time and consideration into what it is. And it's pretty much uh, ghost level in Mario the whole time. Uh, they introduced the new uh, Professor Egad, which I think was cool to have. Uh, I wish they kind of fleshed that out more, letting Mario and Luigi lose, use certain inventions, like uh, Mario had Flood in Super Mario Sunshine. And despite the fact that he wasn't well, it wasn't well received, Flood. I, I kind of wish they they, they um, fleshed that out a little bit, because that makes some cool adventures having a uh, like like Luigi's Mansion and uh, my Sunshine. But anyway, the point. Uh, there's a point I wanted to say for this point because. Like I said, we have two different we have two different characters and their dynamics now, but also we have uh, a new standard for both the Mario Brothers types of bravery. The Mario Brothers are both brave, but in different ways, and this is one of the things I love about Luigi the most, uh, because it makes him actually more realistic than Mario, because Mario is kind of bravery is he takes action because it's right and he does good all the time. However, Luigi's bravery lies that he he acts despite a fear. He's afraid. Of, you bet he's afraid, but he still does the job. He and, he and he still does a good job at it. Unlike me in this video where I screw up the gold rank by miles. Anywho, um Luigi's mansion is just a brilliant testament to the fact that Luigi acts Despite a fear, uh, a, a different form of bravery than Mario's. A, a different, uh, and the big thing with Luigi's character is, he is more real. He has that realism to him. He's not, he's not some, he's not some hero that'll uh, save the princess without question. He will have questions. He will be timid. He will be worried. And wouldn't we too? Wouldn't we uh, do these kind of things? That's what makes him more of a real character, and I love it. And I hate poison shrooms. But what underlines it all is it's amazing how a, a guy who had to, who got a copy color palette from an enemy and was invented to be player two got to this point where fans loved him despite not really knowing who he was. And Nintendo taking notice and creating him, making a year for him. It's it's amazing. Look, he made he accomplished a goal and he's proud of himself because he's earned it. Go Ouija. I'm going to say that. Well, that's the way. Last time I say that stupid joke. But yeah, here we are, people. No more Green Mario. We now have Luigi. Bravo, bravo. And just a nice little tidbit about Luigi's Mansion. Luigi's Mansion was actually originally a uh, demo video to show off the GameCube's graphical capabilities. All it was was just to show off what the GameCube can do. It wasn't meant to be a game, and they saw that, hey, this is fun, and we want Luigi to be Luigi and not Green Mario. So let's make this a game. I like the idea. It's very different. And that's what the GameCube was the whole time, different. It was a very risky launch title. It wasn't received very well, but because Luigi's a fighter, he, and and this game gave him the definition, definite character of of a definite, without a doubt character. We um, progressed, and he has a sequel like ten years later. But you know, whatever the sequel's here, and it's a lot of fun. Um, we have a lot of Luigi to come in the future, and I can't wait for it. Thank you all so much for watching. It's been a blast. I'm so glad to do this again. Next time, we are going to take on a historical analysis on the Mother series, or for us Westerners, the Earthbound series. Can't wait for that one, because the Earthbound series is one of my favorites ever, people. And I'll explain why when the time comes. So, again, thank you for watching. Well, welcome back, and I'll see you next time.